thank you uh, thank you the organizers uh Zilraman in particular uh, it's very late for us we have perhaps five minutes each so I'll be very brief and then perhaps have to finish at an early time that you would expect. The subject today is uh, this session in particular. This could have been the first one in the morning. This has so much of meat in it, so much to say about this, particularly with relation to Bangladesh and today's development, history of Bangladesh, 50 years of Bangladesh. As you have said very well, that this is a, a uh, 50 years of Bangladesh, pathways and trajectories. And at the same time, this is also the 101st uh, uh, anniversary of the birth of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, on whom we are going to, we are having a big uh, program launched by the government, and I'm sure that you are seeing some, are participating in that, or some are seeing it on the TV. Now I come to the subject, the politics and beyond. Now you see, Politics uh, is uh, something that we all know about, but then uh, should we, shouldn't we know a little bit more about it? Uh, when uh, see the great political and uh, the military leaders went to Socrates, and he, they wanted the permission of Socrates whether to go and fight uh, the Spartans, because Sparta was a weaker, weaker state, Greek a Greek, Greek land was a bigger, uh, stronger state. So when Sparta became stronger than Greece, so Greece wanted to go and fight with them. This is a, this is a, a kind of a problem, we call it problematic, which is known as uh, Thucydides, because it was written by Thucydides, the Peloponnesian War. The Sh Socrates said, go ahead. Now having given the order, Socrates thought about it that he made a mistake because the Greeks are going to be defeated, very badly defeated. And that's how the, the politics of uh, uh, politics of warfare uh, started in the sense that, which is accepted even today, that a weaker nation becomes powerful is uh, the victim of other nations which are less powerful, but they are jealous of that. Uh, here, uh, then uh, we can, we are, well, this is known as the Thucydides trap, because do not make this mistake, but then mistakes are being made, are being take, made, but then uh, this is how it is, okay. Uh, then, uh, look, in Political history, uh, we have been uh, seeing four, five thousand years ago. You see, there was a time in China, the six thousand small states were there. And out of six thousand states, slowly, 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 the biggest one, the most powerful one, brought it down to six. So from six to one now, the Han state, that's the present China. Now, look at India. These two countries are the oldest civilizations in the world even older than the Mesopotamia, Mesopotamian, but we don't talk about Mesopotamia, we don't talk about the Egyptian one. But these two particular civilizations where warfare took place, where fighting, fighting took place. So, uh, uh, see, so China became one, then India is in the early stage, you remember uh, this uh, Cotillo and his, uh, his diplomacy and his king. Then we have Machiavelli, uh, the, the Renaissance uh, uh, kingdom of, of, of Florence, how he supported him and supported them, and how they became a rich, one of the most or richest, one of the richest states in the Renaissance Italy of the time. Uh, then uh, we, we come to the next step in on politics again, which is uh, uh, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib and his two honorable ministers, I remember, they talked about Bangabandhu, but I'm not going there. 
the Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib had to bring, had to give independence to the Bangladesh, Bengal. The Bengal had never been independent. So he, he had to prepare himself physically and mentally for a war because he would not get independence for the Pakistanis without a war. And the war took place, it has been said, uh, I think, over the days. Uh, and it was a, a bloody war. Uh, we lost three million. Uh, the Pakis also lost thousands. We don't have an exact number. Uh, but then we won the war with the help of our friend India. Now then, but then we are still in politics. Now, you see, the, the last one that I'll stop on this side before I go to the question of beyond, which is very, uh, uh, is, is kind of a, both philosophical as well as uh, technical. Now, we very often uh, see, talk about, uh, about the Congress of Vienna. Now, the Europe, Europe was the center. America came the other day only, 300 years old. But Europe has been there for 800 years, maximum about 10, uh, uh, 900 years. And the most important countries of, the, of, of Europe, like the British, they all had their colonies. They colonized the entire world, basically. As the British colonized India, Bangladesh included, for for 200 years, 190 years actually. And Bengal was one of the worst uh, sufferer at the hands of the British. Today uh, is March 20, and uh, we are talking about both politics and beyond. It is not a war, uh, not even a cyber war. Cyber was another story. This, it is, if it is a war, it is economic war. Uh. No, not war, but it is economic. How far, how far you can move in your economic activities? Even Bismarck and philosophy will not work today. Bismarck said, the great The great questions of the time will not be resolved by speeches and majority decisions. That was the great mistakes of 1848 and 1849. But by iron and blood, but it didn't, it didn't work, mm. it didn't happen. Uh, but then the Congress of Vienna worked. Napoleon was stopped. Politics. There was no philosophy, no history, nothing. Napoleon came from where you all know. It was sheer politics and political history. He wanted to dominate whole of Europe. He killed thousands of people. Practically, he took all, whole of Europe. So the Congress of Vienna, four leaders, three leaders basically, led by Metternich, they got together and stopped Hitler. Now, so after politics, we are now talking about uh, beyond. Now, in, in so far as Bangladesh is concerned, you see, we have to we have to think about our uh, production in other areas, ideas and energy, not capital or labor. Yes, sir. We are moving out of Literally. capital and labor when we are talking about beyond. And the mention has been made about uh, the, uh, the digital Bangladesh, digitization of Bangladesh, rightly so. So we are now basically talking about, intelligently talking about, mind the word intelligent, we don't talk about capital and labor, which is important, of course. Capital and labor have been talked about here, about, a, about an hour and a half ago, two hours ago. I was here, sitting. They have talked about capital and labor. 
but I am talking about not capital labor, ideas and energy. A country must be a source of ideas and energy. The United States has been and can be the world's most important continuing source of new ideas, big and small, scientific and creative, economic and political. But to do that, it has to make some significant changes. Two more minutes, miss. So after the politics, what is there today? To survive as a nation state, we have to see how many engineers we are producing and how many in real, real merits. Be surprised, don't be surprised. In India, they are producing 5,000 engineers a year. But guess, where are they working? There is no job for them. So they are working in various odd places, in commercial places, etc., etc., etc. Infosys takes, say, hires about 100 engineers. Now they have their own university. Own university, Infosys. They train the engineers there to make them perhaps able to do what Infosys is doing. So see, the standard of engineers is so low. It's not, not Bangladesh. We should not always blame Bangladesh. But in India. India has other things much higher. But this in engineering part, it is as low perhaps, if not, well, slightly up, uh, above, above that of Bangladesh. Then they bring uh, professors from MIT, professors from Harvard, that's what they're trained there. Uh, we are, when we talk about uh, Harvard and MIT, uh, we also know that this is not the philosophy of a political leader. Even Das Kapital worked for a particular time. Even Malthus today does not come handy to us. So things are changing so fast. And Apna Jara Ekinachan, young generation, Tarao Dekte Pachan, we are much, <laughs> much above you. We have seen many things that you have not seen. That Apna Dekach Avakman Hotse. Everything we are saying from day one, from the day, from the day I resigned from the Bangladesh Pakistan embassy and joined the Bangladesh MOOC government as a refugee. And I was a refugee in Geneva for nine months. You see, so what I'm trying to tell you that look, this is how a country is born and a country is built in spite of the fact that the father of the nation was murdered only after three and a half years. I have just finished, yes, miss. So, uh, <laughs> I have been asked about five times. <laughs> I can't be rude to her, but I will stop now. So, we are, when we talk about beyond of course, beyond we can, we are going to the moon, we are going to the Mars, but nobody from Bangladesh, Apna Jaben Akjol maybe. Now, if it is simply I say that, if it is something else other than what I said before, it is what? Again, science and technology. We talk, we talk about nanotechnology, you guys younger generation. We talk about biotechnology and further innovation in science and technology. In remembrance of the 50 years of Bangladesh pathways and trajectories, we recollect, we pride, Ashesh, Ashesh. This is a punishment to you guys. <laughs> we have made, we have, but, but we have many more miles to go. We have been developing the technology and the strategic delta plan. The delta plan, when it is completed, will not be here. Will be somewhere else, but you guys will be here. You will enjoy that. You will see it. We will not be here, but the future generations of Bangladesh, you guys will see. And remember that we are proud citizens of a country, a country born with the blood and tears of millions of people in our dear motherland. This is a story not of Bangladesh alone. This is a story 
north of Asia. This is a story of the whole world, the world that is yet to come. Thanks. Thanks.